And hello, everyone. Welcome to The Real Estate Show on KCMX News Media 880. Pete Belcaster and Joe Breath, The Real Estate Guys, with you in the house today. And hey, thanks for joining us uh, here in mid-June on our, on our show. Uh, today, uh, what we're so excited to talk about is, is, is problems, you know, with home inspections. And Joe, we, we talk about home inspections a lot. Uh, and the things that they can turn up and, and the kinds of problems they can cause. And so really today we're going to talk about at least one particular area that you want to avoid, uh, and sometimes you can't help it, and that's about mold. Yeah, and fact. you don't think about mold until mold is, is part of your life, and then mold's bad. I had a transaction one year ago in Eagle Point that, that ran into that. And I'll tell you, it was a long process. But we were in the hands of some good people that got us through it, and the buyers got through that as well. But boy, oh boy, was that ever the red flag. Yeah. Well, today in the show, Carl Hamasu is the owner of Service Master. That's Carl right over, right over there. Yeah. And Ron Gabbert, uh, who is, uh, well, they call him the mole guy, uh, is, is, is here. <laughs> so, uh, you know, anyway, first of all, th- thank you guys for coming and spending some time with us today. And this show, is, by the way, is presented by the Rogue Valley Association of Realtors, of which Ron is an instructor and teaches the same kind of information you're hearing today ron and carl give out in classes so uh and it's really important and especially you know uh climate change uh, changes in weather patterns and things like that Mm -hmm. i wonder if that's going to affect what we do here anyway so so first of all welcome you guys tell me first of all uh uh when you think of uh of mold i mean it's something that you really don't think about but you guys are right in the middle of it so tell us is it a problem here tell us just what the status is when you go around in your business right now Go ahead, Ron. Well, yeah. Right. <coughs> mold, mold is a big deal. Talking to we're, we're, we're in the uh, the Pacific Northwest. It's very wet here, obviously. Okay. Um, and the business we're in as well. We have a lot of water. Where there's water, there's, there can be mold. Now, I remember, wa- remember Joe, uh, uh, before we heard that water, water issues are the biggest kind of problems that you guys in your business face, correct? Or water damage. I guess water damage. Every right. day. E- e- every day. And so, is mold, how big of a problem is it here? I mean, w- w- tell me where, you know, is it a certain area or just kind of kind of status about what, what it is? You know what it comes down to? It, it's, there's not a certain area. It's a matter of how quickly we get to the water losses. Uh, we have a, a phrase we like to use at the office, don't wait, mitigate. So we, we have a water loss. We want to get on there right away. We want to get out to it. We want to start it drying to help prevent this. Water is one of the things that mold needs to grow. Um, so if we can get in there, start getting things dried up, we can really reduce those chances of mold growing. It needs water and moisture. It needs water and it needs food, just like us. Okay. And so we stop and, and think of, of housing. One of the largest surfaces for mold to grow on and to eat is drywall. And that's pretty much everybody's inside of everybody's home. Is drywall. Yes, it's got paper on each side of it. Okay. And it I, loves cellulose like uh, organic material, so cellulose. Okay. Um, that's paper. Papers on each side of the drywall. It loves that stuff. I can I can vouch for that. Well, I, you know, I ne- I ne- it's one of those things. You know, I, I I didn't know that part of that. So now I've heard. Now I, I've actually attended a, a class on on this. And of course, I've had shows over the years on 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 this problem. Uh, and there's different types of mold, right? I mean, I, I don't know if it, I don't know what you do if you go into your house and you say you might see something there. And in in goodness nights, you know, what do you uh, what do you do? I don't know. That, that's that's the hard question to answer. Um, I can't give you a certain amount of mold that needs to be dealt with or, or whatnot, but the nice thing is, is, and I know our company, I don't know about others, we do free inspections. So mm-hmm. if, if you have doubts, call us. We'll come out. If so we have doubts, we can bring in a, a third-party hygienist. He can come out and do some testing as well. Um, I like to say we're the mold removal experts. Mm-hmm. Anton is who we deal with. Um, he's the mold expert. But how, we, do I, how do I identify it, I guess? I mean, and where am I going to look for it if, if I go in my house... Yeah, if I had my house today, I mean, I, I had a ha- I had a, a, a mold test in my house in my sale. Mm-hmm. I mean, the inspector came and they did a, you know, they were looking for mold. I, I did, wasn't there, but I was one. I was I'd be curious as to where you look for where do, if you do an inspection, where do you look for mold to start with in case you want to go around your house and say, hey, I, I want to know if there's any there or not. Well, the first thing we do is, is we stop. What does mold need? It needs food and it needs water. So the biggie thing, the big thing we look at is, is water. Um, I'm actually a bit of a, a hypochondriac when it comes to water. I have disconnected the water line to my refrigerator. Mm-hmm. I've actually disconnected my dishwasher just because those are some of the areas that we run into so very often as far as mold goes. So anywhere we're, that there's water coming in. Okay, dishwashers. Yes. Okay, that makes sense. And, and ice, ice machines. Yes. And those are areas that you don't get to see those lines. So they're hidden. I don't think about those either, do exactly. I? Okay. All, right, all right. Okay. Continue on. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, so anywhere there's water coming in under sinks. Under sinks, um, okay. Yeah, yeah, bathrooms yeah. Are, an, are another biggie. Again, you get that condensation built up. We don't have the fan with enough power to get the stuff kicked out. 
That's another one you can develop some stuff. Now, what about, mm-hmm. we've had a lot of problems, uh, and joking with this one, where venting out of bathrooms, instead of going out, you know, um, into the air, is just goes into the attic. Right. Now, I've heard that that, uh, and I've seen photographs, i heard that that's a, that can be a real problem. Is, is that true? You know, I, I don't want to speak on behalf of, of the design and, and all right, that. Right, However, yeah. um, you stop and you're taking a system that's designed to not have much moisture in there, and you're adding moisture to it. If it's a house with incredible ventilation, maybe it's not a problem. Oh, okay. But so many homes have been built a while back to where the they don't have the vents perhaps that they need. We run into a lot of mold on sheathing in, in the uh, attics. Uh huh. Just that lack of ventilation. We we have okay. them. We talk to them. We clean it up, and we have them install a humidistatically controlled fan system. Yeah. And it can help kick that stuff out of there. And the basic thing is, yeah, we want to get it out into the atmosphere where it's not going to do the damage. Yeah. Do you know what the problem we identified? And this was with some people that have dealt with Eagle Point plumbing issues pretty significantly in the in the sale that we had out there they had brought another water tower online and the water pressure in the pipes throughout eagle point soared so when they did the pipe test they were finding these and at this property it was underneath underneath the house that the pipes had sprung leaks pinhole size leaks but just that increase in the water the pressure water on about pressure. a 20 25 year old homes system was enough to and that's the water got in there that's that's where all the fun started and <clears throat> where the mold got its hold uh, how, how do you deal with standing water i mean under houses i've had that issue come up a number of times where all of a sudden i, I, I you know you go do an inspection and here's water under the house that's been there yeah, that's got to be a problem carl you deal with that i'm the smallest guy in our business so sometimes i'm the guy <laughs> underneath the house so yeah, he's not yeah, lying he's been out there and done go. it so you go you go under them and look too sure and if there's a whole bunch of water there the only way to get it out is to pump it out yeah and sometimes it's a muddy mucky mess and you have all that itchy insulation falling down yeah. all of you but it's one step at a time You get it all cleaned out, and then you address the mold that is growing underneath. Because you're going to have mold if you have water under your house. The chances of you having mold uh, is going to be probably pretty high, right? Right. Uh, Geez, you know, think of think of all these things uh, that are there. So, so identifying it is number one thing first, correct? Correct. And you can you can identify it yourself if if I'm hearing you guys right. I mean, you can see it a little round kind of splotches that we went down and got certified uh we were taught that something like you just showed me has the potential for three million spores okay but the potential doesn't mean it's always there but so yes it it can spread a whole lot of mold through the house Uh uh-huh so we we, at first we identify it and now we want to contain it and and i would suppose uh, small small containment would be easy but if you get like larger areas that's going to be a problem wouldn't it i mean i'm do you remember and, and maybe some of our listeners may remember uh when when cannabis was growing indoors in houses oh, yeah. do you remember <laughs> that landlords. Yeah, these, these guys. how many landlords did we hear from yeah landlords because the it, it was mold yep. that turned out to be the the horrible deal of that right did you guys remember you amateur know that, hour that <laughs> amateur hour oh <laughs> <laughs> that's that's really true so that kind of thing is is obviously you guys just like we do tear the house out. We need to pull everything out could be, could because be it's growing on onto the onto the um, the board. Yeah. Uh, Mom's anyway. got a great story about a lower level of a house that was hidden. Uh, tell them about that one. Oh wow, we uh, we ended up doing a job way out near Butte Falls. Uh, it was a rental. They've been renting the place by the time we got there for about thirty years. <laughs> okay, um, thirty year rental. There you go. Yep, okay. <laughs> they they'd had some water intrusion on the the basement level, two bedrooms and a big family room area. Well, instead of informing the owner about it, they went ahead and s- closed the door, locked off the stairs, put oh. some carpet down, put uh-huh. some, some chairs on it. By the time we got there, all the walls had started falling down. The doors had warped and fallen down. We had to come through and tear out every wall, every bit of drywall. We had to gut the place, had to put up new temporary walls. Um, wow. So that's one of the real bad ones you're talking about. I mean, and we ha- have, uh-huh. and how, did, how did that happen in there? How, how that, was, that? Uh, that was actually groundwater intrusion from the outside. Groundwater mm. intrusion yes. from the outside. It was, it was a below-grade basement. Mm-hmm. And so it came through and eventually worked its way through. And yeah. yeah, can I get what happens? You know, when when you have eaves and you have lots of rain, uh, that kind of you know, water gets behind. I suppose even if they're, if they're not done right, uh, windows and doors and kind of things. Does mold? Is there a chance the that mold grows? Downspouts, downspouts, mm-hmm. those get, kind of get things. Plugged up. Are those areas that you find mold to when you see it sometimes, or are those areas not really a problem? Uh, are you talking outside the home? Yeah. You know, here's the thing about mold. Uh, let me ask you a question: Is mold Uh-oh. is mold bad? Is mold bad? 
I, I, you know, yes, <laughs> if I'm doing a real estate, I, I guess, if I, I guess it's bad. So here, here yeah, well, yeah. let me, let me give you the answer to that one. Okay. Mold actually, it, it's, it's na- nature's recycling agent. So outside the leaves fall down. Mm-hmm. If we didn't have mold, that stuff would just pile, just keep piling up. So mold actually in and of itself is, is not a bad thing. Okay. We get mold inside the home. It's destructive. It eats what it's growing on basically. So we get it here on the drywall, then it's bad. Yeah. That's that's not even including the health effects that we can have. Yeah. So kind of a trick question. I apologize for that. Yeah, that was a trick. Um, yeah. So again, outside the home, yes, we can get the mold. And if it's growing on the structure itself, we're, of course, worried about that. And the yeah. potential is there for that. But you don't see that much, though, right? We don't see that okay. as much, you know okay. what, because it, it's exposed and it, it has the air. It, it right. dries much it, easier it, than it, inside a home. It would dry Makes faster sense. than it would be underneath in a bathroom or in, in under, uh, under, under structure. And with, with homes like being that. built tighter and tighter, yeah. there's just not that, that flow of air. Okay. And so, yes, it's much easier for things to grow See, inside. See, that's, that's the other part <clears throat> that we've got to ask contractors, you know, as they make zero net homes, which are going to be required, you know, in 2020, yeah. it's, it's happening. Uh, they make them so tight that they have to be able to breathe. And I'm wondering if, if they've considered mold as part of in that package down you know, the cause, line because yeah. i think it's going to have an effect at some well, point and you along those lines what's interesting is they're coming up with waterproof carpet mm-hmm. and waterproof, waterproof carpet, laminate and stuff yeah, in, which, oh, yeah. which in theory sounds wonderful as long as that water's from the top right if that water's right. from underneath you're not going to know about that until yeah. things are rotten through and all molded up and and so there's a there's a give and take with that and and there's a lot of positives but there's some negatives there too. And that's really interesting when you start you kind of delving delving a little bit deeper uh, into it. It's it's about mold today. We're with uh, Ron Gabbard and Carl uh, Hamasu from uh, Service Master of Southern Oregon. We're going to talk about Service Master. We take we had a break coming up here about uh, all the things that you guys must yep. be involved in and what you've seen in, in cleaning up homes. But we're still talking about mold and a whole bunch of things like that. Don't forget, you can check out any of our past shows at realestateshoworegon.com. They're all there on YouTube as well. We hope you'll do so as well. Next week here on the show, we've got mortgage interest rates coming right. back. They only rose again a little bit. They go up, they go down kind of thing. Guy Giles will be here from Bank 34 next week. we got a break coming up. We're back to the Real Estate Show after this. And welcome back to the Real Estate Show here on KCMX News Media 880. Pete Belcaster and Joe Breath, the Real Estate Guys, with you. Thanks for joining us. We've got an interesting conversation today with uh, Carl Hamasu and Ron Gabbard from Service Master of Southern Oregon. Now, before we talk about other things, I just want to talk about Service Master. It's been around, I see ads. I mean, it's been around a long time, right? It's a franchise. Carl, you own it. Uh, how, long have you owned, how long have you owned it? Well, about two more weeks, and it'll be 36 years we've been wow. doing this. Wow. 36? So, so I with was, Service Master? I was three years old when I started. Exactly. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> really? That's amazing. I mean, mm-hmm. that, that congratulations. That's a long time... Uh, 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 with the same with the same organization, so that well, so service master, what do you actually guys do besides mold remediation? I know you, what, what, tell people Far just beyond. what you do. Okay, so one of the things we do, which you mentioned, is water water damage, water cleaning damage. up water. So there's there's a water damage happening somewhere in two or three homes right now, <laughs> uh, yeah. unfortunately. But hopefully, we're the good guys that come in. And we take care of both drying it out in a good way that will reduce cost keep people healthy and put their homes back together so they can be sold, right? Mm -hmm. Water damage, number one cause people's going to call you. Correct. Why else am I going to call you? Well, the other thing you might call us, which we're talking about, is mold. mold. Uh, The third thing you might call us on is if you have a fire, Okay. we'll be there. We have state-of-the-art computers to take care of inventorying, cleaning up, rebuilding, putting everything back wow. together again, just like it was before. So mm-hmm. you must have a minor in psychology like realtors <laughs> do, because you're dealing with people at sometimes a very traumatic oh. time yes. uh, in their home, their, their biggest investment of their life has been um, damaged and needs needs help, and, and you, you do kind of ride in on the white shining white horse and, and help them out in that respect. We, it's, we, a, it's a hard time for them. We like the cape behind us, but yes. The, yeah. the, but the most rewarding part is the people. When you're helping yeah. people in yes. time of need, that is, that is you can't put money on that. Well, you ever you hear often about, you know, water damage, a, a leak pipe. I mean, Fires, I, my yeah. neighbor, she almost took off. She should have been gone for two weeks to Australia. She found a water oh, heater geez, leaking. Yeah. Water heater leaks would, would cause, I guess, those kinds of things. Yeah. Uh, 
plumbing leaks or whatever, but I guess it's the mold thing that uh, that water damage because water can do a lot of damage. It certainly is, uh, as we all know. There. Well, that's interesting. 30, 33 years though. Thirty six. Thirty six years. Yeah, it was three years old. Oh, that's not, what it was. Not thirty six <laughs> yeah. years. That's re- that's yeah. remarkable. And, and 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 tell me right now, we we're here in mid June. Are you guys busy? Tell me what the, what the business has been like uh, because there's so much activity going on. New homes, this people buying, selling everything. So I would assume that you're probably pretty busy. Yeah, as the population, uh, ours is a business of probability. Mm. We know the more people there are, there's probably going to be more accidents happening. So more population, which the valley is really growing nicely, right. the more business we're going to get. Yeah. Uh, again, we don't relish in people having <laughs> bad things happen, but we do want to be there for them when it does happen. Yeah. Uh, and, and they do happen, and that's, and that's just the way it is. But uh, it's nice to know that someone's there. Uh, Twenty four seven. Who can who can come quickly and remediate and begin be, and begin to do it? And and also we learned that, that you guys will give free estimates, right? If someone calls you and if you're, I mean if you're if you're if you have an issue of mold and you should go if you've been in your house a long time you haven't even thought about it, mm. you might just want to go around and take a look uh, and just see what you got underneath underneath the sinks. You're right because the water's going to come up from underneath not generally from top down, right? That's, we'll learn that. that. That's a good one. Right, and you don't want to wait till you're selling your house to discover it. You <laughs> want to take care of it early. <laughs> See, that would be... Cost you more right. when now, you have to pay the buyers. All right. <laughs> now, let me ask it. you this. Now, we, we've heard people say, oh, I have I found some mold. I'm going to take care of it myself. I'm going to use bleach, and I'm going to get rid of it. Now, now, now I know that's not what you guys want, want to see done, but does that work? I mean, do should people do that or just kind of what, what are your thoughts on that you've obviously been around it a long we, time we don't recommend that and actually prior to me starting this job i would have done that myself but okay. going down getting certified learning the the possible adverse health reactions to these things anybody can go over again we talked about mold on the wall here anybody can get a product go over and, and deal with that mold maybe kill it we need to remember dead mold is still dangerous mold still has the same mycotoxins it's still there um, we need to be able to clean that but the thing about remediation it's not just getting rid of the mold it's getting rid of the mold without spreading it to unaffected areas and to people in the other parts of the home. Because there may be somebody who has some sensitivity to those mold spores and the mycotoxins they contain that can cause those issues for them. And we, we do everything we can to prevent that and to keep people as safe as possible. Yeah, and, and Joe, you yeah. asked about what, what the health the health right. uh, part of, of this. Because it, it, it I mean, it, people should take it seriously, especially if someone's getting feeling ill in your house and you don't know why. That's... that's that would that's be a, a key to that's me. That's a common occurrence for mold-related uh, issues is kind of a lingering or an ongoing, unidentifiable, just, um, just, uh, yeah, just dip in your, Ill, in, in your health and your, and your well-being. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a doctor, but the, what we see a lot and what we've learned from that is a lot of it's respiratory. It gets mm-hmm. inside and starts spreading yeah. around, so the, the lingering yeah. coughs and things like that. But we've heard some real horror stories of a uh, gentleman who went down to Texas after some floods, and he ended up inhaling a bunch doing stuff down there, and he actually ended up having mold develop in his lungs. Oh. And it kind of wasted him away. He was a, a big, strong football type player, and uh, that might sound odd because mold generally uh-huh. grows on dead tissue. But you can get the biofilms and whatnot that get into lungs, and it can grow on wow. that. So it it can be. That's an extreme case. I don't want to scare yeah, the heck yeah. out of everybody. Now but. down in Texas, remember when they had the Hurricane Harvey? Yeah. I, I remember seeing the issue was mold. I mean, that was people were so worried about mold, including my son. There was mold, you know, and people would come in and they just literally took you know put, took a saw. Uh, to the drywall that was wet. Remember, they just sawed them off and pulled all that stuff out and got rid of it out of the houses. Was that a smart way to do that? For me, it mold, depends. As long as as long they as did people, it, they did it pretty fast. If it, if they had correct PPE, you know, the the personal protective equipment. Okay. Okay, that that's a way this to is, go. This is volunteers going in there. <laughs> then you know, uh, again, not a doctor. I wouldn't recommend that myself. Though uh-huh. when we get out, we go to work, and I would tease Carl because he spends a lot of money providing us with safety equipment. I was going to say, you have yeah. to have a lot of that. And, and, and as we're wearing it, it there. gets hot, it gets sweaty, and I may curse him a little bit at times when I'm out there doing it, <laughs> but I'm safe, and uh-huh. I'm not getting sick. Right. And I actually do appreciate him spending that money to keep us oh, safe. And, and, and yeah. you know, at Houston, I think there was a volume of work that had to get done. There were so many homes damaged. Uh, and uh, also, what it did to construction costs. We saw the effects of those natural disasters in Florida and Texas and all the sheetrock and all the drywall that had to be replaced, 
that all had to be mitigated, and it put a strain on our supplies and drove costs up. Yeah, yeah. 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 That, uh, that all went hand in hand. So, mm-hmm. yeah. well, that's still happening. Big, I mean, think, think of that though, on the scale of a city the size of Houston and the surrounding areas. How the much extreme cases might yeah. call for extreme measures. Yeah, exactly. That's in, and yeah. who knows what we would have done at the time? I'd like to think we'd have done everything perfect, but uh, <laughs> you know, time, time forty-eight thousand <laughs> homes in one section. That, yeah, that could get to be a big job. Right. Yeah. How do I remove it now? I've, I've gone through. I, we've identified it. We've uh, contained, contained it. it. We remediated it. I guess. Well, so what we, we do what is, we, you know, with our <laughs> containment, we like to have what we call negative air. Negative that, air. Negative air. What that does is that's always sucking air into our chamber because we don't want any of those nasties going out that way. So oh, while we're okay. working with that mold and ripping things out, we have what we call negative air. Um, at that time, what we do is we got to look at. We're generally taught that the best thing, to get, well, best way to get mold, rid of mold is to remove it. So drywall is to remove it. Just, is just, generally just to, generally to remove it. The, it's the, it's the, not the, a hard fast thing. rule, but it, it generally to remove it. So okay. we have drywall here that's got mold on both sides. We're going to cut that out. Um, framing, obviously, it's not financially smart to, to go ripping out framing right. and doing okay. stuff. So we have products that can come in and treat that mold, clean that mold. We we use sanders. We use HEPA vacuums. Wow. We, we use, I, I've done everything to get rid of mold before. Um, so still, we're removing that mold. We just can't rip out those materials. Right. Oh, okay. Um, and that's, that's the gist of that. We need to get it gone, basically. Just take it out <laughs> and remove it. Does, it. does it, when you take it to landfills, I know, you, 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 is that a special permit you need to do that? You have to test it or anything like nope, that? No, it's not considered a hazardous waste, so it, it, it can be not, dumped in the landfills. It's not, not considered Well, if you stop and waste. think, okay. remember, it needs food to grow. A landfill is nothing but food for mold. There's right, already okay. so much mold oh, yeah. out there that it's, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, that. it's, it's <laughs> you're just kind of contributing a little bit to that. And plus, you look at the, the vast airspace, it's, it's yeah. unlimited airspace. Yeah, there's so mold out there, at the, I'm sure, underneath, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure that's uh, that's true. What's the worst case you've ever seen of mold in, no. in the valley here? I mean, wh- wh- the wh- worst wh- case wh- was the one I told you about with that that second story, that lower level. That was, I kid you not, we we had to take out every single wall down there. Three rooms. We took the drywall off the ceiling. We had to build temporary there was that walls. Much mold had, had had grown in this. Every place. square inch of that place was covered in mold. Every item that was in there was covered in mold. And what would cause something like that? I mean, how could that how could that happen? Well, what, what does mold need? It needs uh, food. It needs food and water. And it needs and water. water and moisture. So yeah. you've got that outside water intrusion that comes in, and we've got drywall everywhere. So, uh, so it, 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 would just, just it would just spread. Wa- would water just water will wick in, in drywall like you wouldn't believe. I don't remember the number specifically, Carl, but I mean it, it will wick up a certain amount of time, and it'll it'll just it'll just continue to wick and, continue and travel throughout. On. So mm-hmm. yeah, it traveled through the, the whole drywall thing. was the was the is the is, is a the sponge is a sponge for mold. <laughs> I, I didn't know that. I I, I never knew yeah. that. That's the worst thing you've ever seen, right? That that's the worst total thing. I had a you know I'm not a tiny guy, and I might look like I'm not a, a chicken, but I got a picture here of some mold here, and this looks pretty, here. pretty. Okay. Doesn't look all that bad. You see a few little strings there and whatnot. I can't wait to hear this story. This it, is, uh, is that is that mold hanging down? That's you know, it, it could be mold, down? it could be a fungus, but that yeah, that's what that is. That's some sort of fungus, is what that is. It could be a mold. Uh, mold is a type of fungus. Those are stalactites. You know, well, it was <laughs> interesting because I came like. into this and I hadn't seen that before. I've seen a lot of stuff. I walked up, or I crawled, and this isn't a crawl space. I what crawled into space? that, oh. and I was coming down to kind of see what it was, and I went up to reach for it, and I was okay. doing this. And those little tendrils actually reached for my finger. Ah, they really? <laughs> Just saying welcome. Wow. You know, and you know, I'm not a small guy, but I've never moved that quickly out of a crawl space in my life. <laughs> it it uh, it startled me. Now I don't know if it was an electrostatic attraction. It could be mold. Like I said, mold's very designed to okay. be affected by air. So maybe yeah. when I move my hand up, maybe the air caused it too. But, right. but you have to go through it. You use that. It might have just how been coming you? for you too. It, it, you yeah. were coming <laughs> for it. I was thinking alien life form. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and how do you clean that? I mean, you got to get those fancy equipment out to do that. That was kind my of a thing, my HEPA vacuum you? is is my savior when it comes it, to work. And it would work with that. Yes, absolutely. It does that. The HEPA back, vacuum is my you, single biggest tool. You right. went back and faced them down. I get paid to do it. Because the last I heard, you left. Once I got my breathing under control, we were okay after that. So. Uh, no, my, my HEPA vacuum is the biggest tool I have. Yeah. Um, it's a true wow. four-stage HEPA to, to get that stuff. So we go through and say this room's covered, you know, a little bit of mold there, but we have to treat the whole room. I have to HEPA vacuum every square inch of everything wow. in here. Uh, it's yeah. very detail with spiders in my garage. That was, that was shop you, back. You did that in the crawl, in the crawl space. I'd have had Carl. I'd have call, called Carl. Yeah, and say, I Carl, wasn't going okay. into that. You know, the, <laughs> oddly enough, he has final say on that, so I got to go in the crawl space. <laughs> Carl was smart there. Yeah. I'm just scared. Not smart, just scared. <laughs> He's not going to go in. It would be better for him to go back and face those alien things that were trying to get him. Ron's a bigger guy than yeah, I am. That's right. Yeah, yeah. your best soldier. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is there any particular places, uh, I, I suppose, it's just random if you have it, right? I 
really there's not any particular places in the Rogue Valley that that, that where you have more more of an issue than others, or, or is well, that really? I don't, I don't want to besmirch any neighborhoods necessarily. It's, no, it's there, okay. there, there is a certain neighborhood that uh, when PEX piping was starting to come out. When uh, piping, it, see, it piping's was, that piping. It was being used, and, it, and it's what we found with that that early stages of PEX with the continuous hot water circulation. Um, we've had a big, big problem in crawl spaces with that. We've wow. had that stuff failing left and right. Um, now say it again to people to hear that. What, what, what kind of what kind of a thing is that again? Because I've never um, heard that before. It, it's called PEX pipe. It's the, PEX the clear pipe. the clear plastic. Clear um, plastic. I'm not a plumber, so I, I don't okay, have all the okay. terms down correctly. I okay. apologize, all but right, it's, okay. um, it's it's the latest trend. It's kind of what's going into okay. places nowadays. But the but early stages with the continuously flowing hot water, mm, right. we're finding it failing and. The problem is who goes in the crawl space and checks things. Who, that, that's the problem. No one so, goes in the crawl space. Yeah. So next thing you know, yeah. it's not just a localized thing here. It's a and this is a very very up kind of upscale neighborhood with two thousand plus square foot homes. Uh-huh. Well, now I've got a crawl space that's two thousand square feet wow. that, that we're having to deal with, wow. and it, it, it's it's a pretty big deal. Cable guy checks the crawl space at my house. <laughs> you know, I. <laughs> I would have what? them do that. I'd call for, <laughs> call for some cable <laughs> upgrades once a month or something what like did, that. What'd you call that again, that stuff? Or did the that, PEX? The, the pe- PEX. Yeah. Remember it, that, PEX. I mean, if you, if you have yep. that, you might, wanna, you might want to uh, check it out. Check but your crawl space. Check your crawl space. Boy, the worst thing you have is, crawl, is water in the crawl yeah. space. That is bad news all the way around. we got a break coming up here. We're talking today with uh, Ron Gabbert from Service Master of Medford, Carl Hamasu as well. We're coming right back. The Real Estate Show continues right after this. And welcome back to the Real Estate Show here on KCMX News Media 880. Pete Belcaster and Joe Brett with you here today. And thanks for joining us. Don't forget you can check out any of our past shows at realestateshoworegon.com. We have some terrific shows there, including one that I really enjoyed was uh, with Rick Harris uh, a couple weeks ago on the fair housing turning 50 and and the issue and and realtors with that. I thought that was just an interesting show. And uh, I learned a lot. I didn't know about a history that. lesson a history in lesson. in part, and it was really yeah, excellent information. Yeah, He's, yeah. We'll have him back. Yeah, we'll have him come back as well. <laughs> anyway, today on the show, uh, Ron Gabbert, who's here, and Carl uh, Hamasu uh, from Service Master of Southern Oregon are with us. We're talking mold mostly today because these guys uh, conduct a course for the Rogue Valley Association of Realtors continuing education class on this subject. And we, you know, we we kind of laugh sometimes about mold. We, and we, you can make jokes yeah. about mold, but and they're both really into mold. So and they're so really into mold. It kind of so grows on you. Oh. Grow on you. <laughs> yeah. I think the thing we don't, you don't want to be involved with is mold, and right. you really never want to call them. However, twenty four hours a day, we've learned Service Master will be there, right. and, and you know if you if you need you, and boy, when you need you, right. when we need you, you you need to be there. Obviously <laughs> about that. <laughs> So we talked a lot about those things, especially about mold. There's other things that you guys do, too, that, that I just want you to share with people that uh, it's not just, I mean, you can only do so much mold cleanup, and there's only so many fires that we have in, in, in a property, and water damage or whatever. So I know there's other things that, that you guys do, and, and this is fascinating to me. So, Carl, uh, you've been trained in a lot of things. So, yeah, kind of segueing in from mold, because mold, you have to suit up, you have to take all this protection. We do the same thing in trauma situations, and that's some place that you, you talked about the people and helping people. That's some place where helping people really shines because you're uh-huh. usually walking into a really tender situation mm, sure. where somebody's being affected, not always passed away, but at least uh, had some accident or some traumatic thing happening. Oh, sure. In those situations, there's two sides of it. One is we do need to take protection because uh, with sure. bloodborne pathogens, that type of thing, we want to protect our workers. But also, we need to be quick, yeah. get there quickly because people don't want to be around. They that don't want to right. see you with right. uh, with your with your uh, uh, suit Gear on. on yeah. uh, right. uh, I, well, I, I can see that. Yeah. Do you clean up? Do you actually clean up uh, accident scenes and things like that uh, in homes? Yes, just in homes, not not in not on highways or something like right. that kind of thing. No, that's a different thing. But in homes, all the time. Uh, unfortunately, suicide rates has been on the news are okay. up. Uh, we do those. We always, for our workers' sake, usually try to send in two people at a time just for the psychological aspect. Sure, yeah. But they are so compassionate and they know how to talk to people. 
to to empathize with them, but still you need to get the job done because they need to be able to work past that too. Oh, gosh, this is something, that Joe. I, I I don't think I've ever even thought about. Yeah. I, yeah. Seriously, yeah. I mean, I, I don't. I I something. I, I've done quite a few of myself, and having that second person can can be a really big thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, most of them haven't. Really, I've had a couple that that affected me badly, and having that second person there is definitely a good thing. Yeah, yeah. And so, Pete and I both worked in a newsroom. Yeah, we know first yeah. responders who deal with those same type of issues, it's the same type of uh, potential mm-hmm. uh, trauma and personal um, inclusion in, in those situations. Yeah. I mean, that's a tough job, it really is. It's a tough job. Uh, and, and, and let me ask you about your employees and how are you able to find people? Do you train them? How do you how do you get this working? You train because, them to deal with gee, that. Gee, we hear, we hear yeah. on our show over the years, you know how hard it is to get people. I mean, all these kinds of things. You're in a particular business that's pretty spect- spectacular there so w- tell me is it, is it hard or how how do you do that sure i can't say that <laughs> without saying that we've been in business for 36 years so you're years. doing something right okay yeah. wow. 36 years ago it was a different market there are people <laughs> to hire right. now you turn the clock ahead because of lawsuits and uh, uh-huh. legalities sure. the type of worker we do and that we hire is completely different i tell uh, new hires that the person we hired 20, 30 years ago would not be in our business today. Would not be in it today. Because there's uh, so much technology. Right. There is also the demand. Everybody expects more quickly mm-hmm. and good service. Mm-hmm. So the demand is so much higher. So wow. we are actually, I've been running an ad for probably the last five years continuously. Wow. Just looking for those. We don't want good workers we want stellar workers like Ron. Uh huh. Yeah, and and you know that's and that's hard to find. But when you find somebody like this guy, Keep you better just like just just get him this way. And don't let him go. Right? They're like they're like family. They he, he, and what a he does really well because yeah. yeah. if you look at the work we do, they've got to be doing something right to, for people to want to stick around. We we oh, crawl yeah. crawl spaces with sewage. We do this type of stuff. Wow. But when you have ethical people and good people like the Hamasus, and I can't lie. They they treat me well uh-huh, as far as paying sure. and all that goes. There, he's been very good to me in that regard as well. Um, it all plays together. I mean, the biggest thing was just the people themselves. It, it's yeah. they're yeah. they're just good people and and people I want to work for. What yeah. a, what yeah. a testament to thirty six years and what a perspective yeah. you have on how business has evolved and the way we do business and what people expect of us. Excellent point. The yeah. expectations of yeah. the consumer yeah is, yeah. is probably changed more right. so than I still remove mold probably the same way I did thirty years ago. But it's the it's the absolutely it's the person now at the other end yeah. who's changed the most and it expects different things. That's yeah. interesting, yeah. isn't it? Mm-hmm. But it's true. Yeah. I mean that's absolutely true. Yeah. Well so so all right, so what else there you guys that you, you teach? Anything else you do that that, that we need to know about. I didn't even know you did half of this stuff, so I really Real, learned a lot. Realtors today. Have need a lot of education. Yeah. So <laughs> you got to help us. Well, you right? know, you f- you come into situations, and I, I you can I never would, learn I w- enough. I would never think of calling the service master right. on some of these other things well, that you've been into, involved with, blood and things like that. You yeah, need to have yeah, clean up yeah. other things cleaned up. Who I mean, does we that? We go back to that fire a little bit. You you, you think of fire, but it, it's more than that. Uh, I think Tyson's getting ready to prepare something for RVAR on um, just odor control. Odor they can control. come in and just other odors and things wow, like that. Yeah. I mean, our, our fire crew is, is really trained well to, to deal with stuff like that, and it's not always from fires necessarily. So oh. it's it's the business is so well-rounded. Mm-hmm. I mean, basically, if you need something done, we can get it done. I oh. mean, it's, okay, maybe what? to a degree. We'll have to be careful <laughs> that. We don't want to go Water overboard Water is the house's but. enemy. Odors are a sales enemy. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes. So help us mitigate those for our sellers. Yeah. 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 And if you're, you know, and we talk always about buying and selling, if you're selling, you have got to check this stuff out yeah, before yeah. you put it on yeah, the market, yeah. right? I mean, I, I can't even—I can't even tell you. You have to. I did. Got I did experience. that. Yeah, you've I, done you that have to sure. check it out. I mean, I looked all through this thing. I heard yeah. we're gonna have a mold test. I went and looked. I went <laughs> looking <laughs> underneath my thing. I, you know, I didn't, I didn't see anything, but that you know, but just check it out yeah. because if you don't, you don't want to get yeah. called. You don't know if you, you know. You've been in the house twenty years, ten years. You never looked at these things, and so you don't want to have that creep up on you because it's gonna cost you. Cause get, they, get ahead cause of it. I'm sure when they're putting their suits on and they're going into yeah. the remo- remove and do all this stuff, it ain't cheap. No. So you better do it. You, so you no. want to mitigate it as best you can. Does insurance cover some of that stuff, by the way, that, that you do? We're, or, we're finding they're, they're coming back around to it. Um, we still have some that just really specifically don't. Some are coming back where you can add a rider. Um, okay, let's, okay. Honestly, I think we're still running about 75% out of pocket. So, so people should actually maybe ask their insurance uh, carrier. That is a if, great thing. If, they, if, if mold is if mold is covered, mm-hmm. I never thought of that one either. That, that's a good one too because you 
you may have it or you may not have it in your coverage. Well, maybe you may want to have it. We, we've yeah. honestly run into people who've had their same insurance for 40 years, and then they, this is their very first claim in 40 years, and it's not covered <laughs> because it wasn't in their policy. So I think it's important to ask. It wasn't yeah, in the original point. policy, and unless you ask, it's not going to be automatically put in. We're out of time. How can someone get a hold of you guys, the Carl, uh, Service Master of Southern Oregon? Had the same phone number for 36, 36 years. 36 years. 541 <laughs> <laughs> Seven seven three nine five five nine, and I can Google you too. You can service Google master. Me I, I did internet. that, and I yeah. found service master of Southern Oregon. You can give him a call. Well, we only want to call you when we're in need. Yep, yeah. but it sure only is, once. Oh, but it sure is good to know that you guys you'll are there, be there, and you'll be there twenty four seven, and obviously with with great success. Yeah. I might add too. Uh, and so uh, keep up the good work. And again, thank, thank you for you. being with us. Great and information. Thank you for having us. This is Instructors. They work, again, uh, do this for the Rogue Valley Association of Realtors, which is the sponsor of today's show. That'll do it for the Real Estate Show here this week. Thank you so much for thank being with so us. You have a great week. We will talk to you next week right back here on KCMX. God bless you all and have a great week.